Hello, welcome to week three. Uh, third set of lectures. We're going to progress the way that the others have. I'll try and chunk them up into bite sized pieces. Um, and by the time you've done these, and by the time I've done these, we'll be 25% of the way through the lecture content for this course. Woohoo! How good is that? Um, so what our plan is for this set of lectures or for this week is to really make sure we understand what artificial intelligence is and get ourselves in a good foundational place so that we can explore what kind of legal considerations will follow out of the development and the use of artificial intelligence. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Let's start by defining what artificial intelligence is. Uh, your reading starts with this great definition that comes from Kurtzwell. Um, AI is an attempt to build machines that, quote, perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people, end quote. Very solid, very well-known definition. Um, Kurtzwell himself, really interesting guy. Um, I, I find it, I, I kind of giggle every time I see it because he's also very, has his name attached to some very expensive synthesizers that my musician partner absolutely loved when we were first together many years ago. Anyway, enough about me. Um, so basically, as the slide suggests, again, I'll speak to it so if you're not looking at the slides you'll be fine these are the kinds of things intelligence in this context is the kind of thing uh, we're talking about machines that can recognize patterns that can process language and make suggestions or recommendations and when we think about humans one of the first signs of intelligence is being able to recognize things especially faces um if somebody's been in a coma or they've been very ill um you know one of the things that we're looking for is that they recognize us that's a sign of intelligent life um that uh, one of the first things that we do with babies is we play peekaboo um and we recognize this sort of growth in intelligence at the point where the baby recognizes that you haven't disappeared just because you're faces behind the hands um, that they're recognizing who you are uh, processing language understanding translating formulating answers to questions all of this is an innately human intelligence task and ultimately making suggestions recommending things answering questions all of this is very human um, and now we're seeing artificial intelligence being used for things like recommending books or music, for planning logistics or even deciding who goes to prison and for how long. Uh, so we'll talk about a lot, a lot of these kind of applications as we move through. And of course I want to break it down, but before I break it down I really want to stop for a moment and ask ourselves why do we need to define AI in the first place? What is it about this crazy woman with the colourful clothes and her desire to make us understand all of these definitions? Is this just a legal thing? Well, let's think about it. I mean, it's a really good question for those of you who are frustrated by this. Um, there are lots of functional or, or abstract concepts I should say abstract concepts that we have a functional understanding of but we couldn't necessarily define immediately like happiness or irony <laughs> there's an irony is how hard it is to describe what irony is um, time actually explaining what time is it's, it's a very complicated concept but we know it when we see it in fact Justice Potter Stewart of the US Supreme Court famously said once in relation to hardcore porn I can't define it but I know it when I see it surely artificial intelligence that's enough for us right the answer to that question requires us to think about what a system of law is so again, I'm answering a question with a question, uh, not something ChatGTP would do, let me tell you. Um, so one of the reasons we need to think about what the definition is, is because ultimately we're going to be talking about what legal consideration is. Is, uh, is so it's not sufficient to follow justice stewart and just say we'll recognize it when we see it 
For a legal system to function effectively, the people who are subject to that legal system need to be able to understand the ambit and the application of the rules. So um, on the slide, you can see um, four principles that come from a legal theorist, an American legal theorist called Lon L. Fuller. Um, he actually set out eight formal requirements for a system of law to satisfy certain basic moral norms. Um, ultimately, he was arguing that uh, well, principally, that humans have an opportunity to engage with the law and to shape their behaviour as a consequence of that. So often it's referred to in academic terms as Fuller's desiderata, uh, and they include uh, the four that are on the screen, uh, a requirement that law should be promulgated so that citizens know the standards to which they're being held, and that laws should be be understandable. Um, in order to pass the tests that Fuller has put together, systems need to use specific and workable definitions when describing the conduct or the phenomena that are subject to the regulation. Um, he's, he's got a rather charming quote, I think. Uh, uh, he says, we need to share the anguish of the weary legislative draftman who at 2 a.m. says to themselves, I know this has got to be right. And if it isn't, people might be hauled into court for things we don't mean to cover at all. But for how long must I go on rewriting it? It's probably how you feel a little bit about essays from time to time. Essentially, he puts together a really good moral or ethical argument that people can't choose to comply with a, law, a rule that they don't understand. If a law is impossible to know about in advance, then its role in guiding the actions that people take will be at the very least diminished, probably destroyed. Unknown laws are really a tool of the powerful. Um, they basically are the kinds of laws of the those of you who are great readers uh, might recognise from Kafka. Uh, there's a book that Kafka wrote called The Trial, where the protagonist is accused, condemned and ultimately executed for a crime which is never actually explained to him. Um, so it's important if we're going to regulate AI that we actually agree what AI is. Just as we're going, to, we're going to regulate what um, a, a conduct is suitable for people, we need to actually understand what a person is, um, which one would think has been relatively lacking in controversy. Um, but as many of you will realise, those of you particularly who looked at the first uh, sort of intro to law module zero in our course, um, that um, Aboriginal people in Australia were not under the law that was imposed um, on white settlement, considered to be people for a very, very long time. Uh, so that is that is not new. And women didn't were not accorded all of the benefits of people for a very long time as well. Um, so sometimes we can have concepts that we think we know, but unless we're very clear about what they are, we're going to get ourselves trapped when it comes to talking about them. So that's why. Let's talk very briefly about what next. And I'm going to do that in a separate video because I want to keep these nice and tight. Cheers.